Hi, I'm Spencer. I cook, create recipes, and I work here at Chez Panisse as a cook. And today, we're going to be making crispy chicken thighs with a Meyer lemon salsa verde. If I had to choose one chicken recipe, this would be it. The chicken skin is rendered slowly and so it's nice and crispy, and the chicken is just flavorfully cooked and it's just perfectly juicy. And you top that with an herby Italian green sauce with lemons and garlic, it's, it's perfect. Um, I first had a version of this dish actually right here in the restaurant at a table right over there. Um, I was in about junior high, I got served this plate of chicken. I started eating it and I'm like, how can this be chicken? It was just, it was just perfect and it was kind of one of those mind blowing food experiences. It was so delicious. Um, I figured out my own version of it and slowly adapted over the years. Um, and then a few years ago, before I started working here, I had this recipe, I started like sharing it with everyone and cooking it. Um, and it's this version of the chicken. And now I start working here and, and then cooking it on the grill station. And it's come full circle um, from tasting it to making it. It's just a really fun recipe. And um, I think you guys will really enjoy it. Chez Panisse is a restaurant in Berkeley, California, founded by a woman uh, named Alice Waters back in 1971. And this restaurant is just legendary and, and iconic. It really pioneered the farm to table movement uh, which is the idea of, of restaurants and chefs partnering with local farms and asking them to grow like specific variety of things pure for pure taste, not based on like the, the amount of produce the plants produce or how transportable the produce is, but just for how tasty it is and getting all these really cool heirloom varieties and using them again. Um, this place also spearheaded the organic food movement and started um, California Cuisine, which is basically the idea of taking produce that is just so perfect and just simply dressing and preparing it and cooking it so it just tastes more like itself. Um, our menu changes daily here um, and it's just a wonderful place to work and I'm just so honored that we get to film some videos here. So let's get started with the chicken. So what I'm gonna do is walk you through what ingredients we have for the chicken, and then we're going to make the Meyer lemon salsa verde. Then we're gonna butcher and prepare the chicken, cook the chicken, and we'll put it all together. It is really a simple recipe. So for the chicken portion, we have six bone-in skin-on chicken thighs. Um, I really like the skin on the thighs and the dark meat. It cooks well in this way. It's very flavorful, very juicy. Um, and you just have to take the thigh bone out. It's really easy and I'll show you guys how to do that. And then we just have salt and olive oil for the chicken. And then for the Meyer lemon salsa verde, we have uh, Meyer lemons. Um, and Meyer lemons are a special kind of citrus. They're very unique, unique to California, especially in the Bay Area. They're crossed between a citron and a mandarin. I just Googled this a while ago. But uh, my lemons, they're a little sweeter than your normal lemon. They still have that tartness, but a little sweet. And their pith, like the white part underneath the zest, is not insanely bitter. And so it's really nice to use these little bits in the Meyer lemon salsa, which I'll show you guys in a second. We have capers, anchovies, which are highly, highly, highly encouraged. But if you really don't like anchovies, you don't have to use them. Um, garlic. Uh, we have a bunch of parsley, salt, red wine vinegar, a little pepper, and olive oil. So let's get started with the salsa verde. I'm going to bring our parsley over. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pick our parsley, and we're just going to pick all the leaves off. Pick all the leaves off. I like to kind of bring all the leaves together and then like pick in one motion. A little, a bit of the stem is OK but you don't want too much of the stem, it can get a little tough. So to cut the parsley, I like to kind of bunch it up, roll it into like a really tight ball. And then you wanna get a really nice sharp knife for this. And I like to just make fine little slices at first and then you just go over it a bunch. But this initial chop really helps you to get a fine chop on the parsley. You're looking for as fine as you can. And like, so I go over it once and then I like kind of repile it. Is that a word? We'll go with it. You repile it and then you chop through it again. Okay, so now we have our chopped parsley in here and we are gonna do our capers. And I don't chop them too fine. 
capers are the bud from a bush in the Mediterranean, and then they're, they're pickled and fermented. And then they sell like caper berries. So it's like once this bud becomes a flower, becomes a fruit, you can pickle that and eat that too. Okay, so that's it. A little caper in there. We're gonna do the anchovies. I am doing two fillets. And these are more just a huge like flavor thing more than anything. I'm just gonna slice it one way and then finally cut it. I guess if you, I know some people are really hesitant on anchovy, that's totally fine. You can leave it out. It just kind of brings this nice savoriness to the sauce. Um, if you like fish sauce, you could do that too. It's like has that it's it has the same function, I guess, of like being a salted fish item, but a little different. These you want pretty fine because they are fairly salty. We put those guys in there. Garlic. So if I was here at the restaurant, cooking for the restaurant, I'd probably use a, um, a mortar and pestle to pound the garlic like this. And we'd take the garlic, we'd peel it, um, we'd chop it up a little bit and then use this to, to pound it. But um, since we're only doing like one clove, I'm just going to use a microplane. If you don't have a microplane, you can smash it against your board and chop it and put a little salt in there and then like kind of mix it and that smashes it down. This is a pretty big clove. So I'm gonna use, we'll try half a clove first. And this time of year garlic is strong. Maybe a little more. I like garlic. Great, great, great. Get it? It's a microphone. Okay. And then the fun part. So Meyer lemon, Meyer lemon bits. So what my friend Ann taught me is you're gonna make little slices like this. And we'll do it on the other side. It's so like three with a very sharp knife. And then we'll stack those slices up. This, and then you're gonna make little bits. So like little squares of the zest and the pith and some of the fruit too. And then it's, they look really cool because they're like little yellow cubes floating around in the sea of green sauce. But also they taste so good. Um, if you can't find a Meyer lemon, I probably wouldn't do this with like a normal Eureka lemon. The pith is probably too bitter. What you could do is just uh, do the zest of a lemon and you'll get the same thing. And I totally do that and that's, Fine and great and delicious. So then you slice it and then you make cuts and then you're gonna turn it 90 degrees to make these little perfect, hopefully, little squares of little Meyer lemon bits. See, aren't they fun? So now you have these nice little bits and we're gonna mix them in here too. We're gonna put a little bit of salt in here. Um, the capers and anchovy have a lot of salt, so we don't want too much salt. And then we're gonna put little black pepper. And then we're gonna put some olive oil, just enough to cover. This is extra virgin olive oil. So this is the thickness you're looking for for salsa verde. It's not, it's like a sauce. Well, Cause that's what it is, it's a sauce. That's what it means. So nice thickness. Um, I'm gonna taste it just for salt and flavor. Mm, it's really good. It's really, really good. Um, so last thing we do is we're gonna add a little bit of red wine vinegar at the end, right before we put it on the chicken, and that just will brighten up the flavors and it'll go really great on the chicken, but we don't do it now. If we do it now and it sits, the, the parsley will turn dark and we want to nice, keep it nice and vibrant and green. Verdant, if you will. 
All right, so we're gonna take these chicken thighs and we're gonna take out the bone, season them, and cook them now. So we're in our blue room and it's where we do a lot of butchery in the restaurant. And so we're going to cut the chicken thighs and take the bone out. So I have the six bone in skin on chicken thighs and I'm just gonna take it, turn it over. It's a really easy cut. All you gotta do is you see the thigh bone here and this is what we're removing. So you really just, I take my two fingers and put them on the edges because you don't want to get near your knife. You have a, a sharp bony knife, a paring knife would work too. And you're just gonna cut on one side to kind of free that bone. And you'll see this on this side. Cut on the other side to free that bone. And then what I like to do is I like to turn it on its edge and put the bone on facing down. And you come in really, really close to the bone. And you just kind of cut slash, you're kind of like scraping the meat off the bone. And there's this little part here, which I like to cut off too. And that's it. So here you have a boned out chicken thigh. The skin is still intact. And now you this meat is like one flat layer and so it'll cook much evenly. It'll cook much more evenly. So now we're gonna cook our chicken. Um, and so we have two cast iron pans ready to go. We're gonna season it. Um, it's, it's good to season the chicken, if you can, ideally an hour beforehand. Uh, obviously we're not doing that and that's okay, but if you season it beforehand, it allows the salt to permeate in the meat. It makes it for a more flavorful and juicier chicken. But I'm just cooking like this and it's totally fine. Um, what is important though, is that you temper it for about an hour, meaning that you bring these chicken thighs out of the fridge for about an hour and it allows the temperature to come up closer to room temperature, which allows the chicken to cook more evenly. So not only is like the bone out and it has, it's like a single layer of meat, but also the chicken is, is closer at temperature. It, it just, the chicken will cook more evenly and it'll be better for you. So when you season chicken or you season anything, it's really important to season it from high up and it allows the salt to kind of spread out through the air as you're, as you're seasoning. Versus if you, if you season really up close, the salt kind of clumps up and you get really salty parts and non-salty parts. So the high up thing, it's important. We are going to turn our pans on. You want medium low. The idea on this chicken is you want it to slowly render, that, that means the fat to kind of come out of the skin and it for it to slowly crisp. It's not a quick process. So we're gonna go medium low. We're gonna do some olive oil. You don't need a lot, because again, the chicken will release a lot of the oil. But enough to coat the bottom of the pan. And then we're just gonna lay the chicken thighs in. You don't need them to sizzle right away when you put them in. You want that kind of, you're going for the slow render on this. This chicken is originally called chicken al matone, which means chicken cooked under brick. And so I'm gonna put a couple of cast iron pans on top of the chicken, what that does is it compresses the meat and it makes sure the skin is in full contact with the bottom cast iron. So everything renders nicely, the meat cooks much more evenly, and we're good to go. Do you hear that sizzle? That's kind of the sizzle we're looking for. It's a little high. You want it to just be sizzling, not like browning a lot or, or oil tons of, of splatter, but just a nice little sizzle. It'll take about eight to 12 minutes. We want them fully brown, crunchy on that side. The chicken will be cooked about 75 to 80% of the way. We'll give them a quick flip. We'll cook for another two to three minutes, take them off, and then they're done. Here's what we're looking for. You want the chicken to be like 75, 80% the way through, which it almost is. Um, we're looking for a really nice golden, crispy skin, and we're gonna flip it over. That one's almost there.
And then we're just gonna cook it about two, three minutes on the other side, just to let it cook. You know the chicken is done if it's pretty firm to the touch, if there's not a lot of uh, pink juices coming out, if the juices are clear. You can stick a thermometer in there, it should be about 160. And then we're gonna let it rest and coast to the way though. This is done. That's done. That's done. You can see, if you just touch it, the meat is firm and cooked. So our chicken is done. We're gonna finish up our sauce, plate it, and it's time to eat. So we're just gonna put a little bit of red wine vinegar in here, just a splash. And then also a little bit of this Meyer lemon juice. Kind of get that dual acidity thing going. We're gonna give it a nice mix again. Another little taste. Mm. It's really bright with the lemon, lemon bits and really garlicky and it's really, really good. Uh, you can mix this up by putting different herbs in there. You can put chopped nuts. You can put some toasted breadcrumbs for crunch. You can mix up the lemon, you can put lime, you can put other different citrus. I made one with kumquats once. There's a lot of fun things you can do with salsa verde. This is kind of just my version for this dish. And now we're gonna take the chicken. It is done, it is nice and crunchy and flavorful. We're gonna take it and I like to slice it. You can serve them whole like this, but I like to slice it on a slight bias, which means at an angle. And then I'm just gonna spoon our salsa verde right on top. I just like to do a little bit just to kind of make it look nice with the green, but you don't want to cover too much of that crunchy skin. And then usually I'll just like put this bowl on the side and let kind of put people put it on, put more on if they want. So this is our crispy chicken thighs with Meyer lemon salsa verde. It is probably hands down my favorite chicken recipe. I hope you guys make it with this salsa verde. And it's fun to cook here at Chez Panisse and cook this recipe come full circle. So please make this recipe, please subscribe and share this video. Send it to your mom, send it to your friends, send it to your Uncle Bob. We'd love that. Thank you guys so much.